And welcome back. This is part two of our piece on Gaza and uh, Zionism. Welcome back. It's been a week for you and about 15 seconds for us. It's really weird because we had to record two episodes at once. We're going to go out of here and see that it's like we did some weird time travel shit. Hyperbolic time chamber <laughs> shit. Uh, but uh, we hope you enjoy this first part. Or second, second part. <laughs> um, we hope you enjoy it. And uh, we'll see you all next time with some fresh stuff. Let's get into it. And the UN, the newly established UN, one of the first big things they ever did was divide that tiny, we're talking about a sliver of land. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the grand scheme of everything, it is tiny. But uh, so they, uh, they uh, officially recognize the state of Israel. And they divide, uh, they divide lands between Israel and Palestine. Right. Yes. And but it's of course you know what I mean. This involved taking people off of their home, taking people off of their lands that they've their ancestral homes. Mm -hmm. You know, you're pushing you're pushing people who have lived on these lands for generations. Got to love the government, right? To move and go to these new settlements mm -hmm. that they've never lived in before. People outside strangers come in and tell you to leave your ancestral land because it's what they decided. It's not yours anymore. We decided no, it's not yours. Mm -hmm. Go fuck yourself. So, thus begins the conflict that would, I mean, it's still going on. It's one of the interesting things he said, too, in the uh, Martyr Made podcast was that, you know, for people that see on Fox News or whatever news they watch where there's a, there's another clash in Gaza or the West Bank, and mm -hmm. they just uh, kind of put it in the back seat, and they're like, oh, well, they've been fighting for thousands of years, when really... This didn't start until the Palestinians were forced out of their ancestral homes to make way for this Jewish immigration. Yeah. So it didn't really start until after World War II. Mm -hmm. The Jews, like I said before, uh, he mentioned that they were just considered natives, non-aggressive natives. Yeah. And whatever countries the Jews and the Arabs lived in together at the time, they were pretty much neutral. Yeah. So that's... Jews considered, like, they considered, uh, I think they called them... Uh, brothers or uh, sons of Ishmael. Yeah. Like they considered them part of the lost, part of the tribes of Israel in all reality expanded. Well, they're all part of the same Abrahamic religion, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And until you, you know, force integrate, I mean, well, that's the thing. That's what this boils down to, to anybody out there. This is my opinion. Mind you, um, this is not a matter of religion and I don't think it really ever has been. No. I don't think so either, in my opinion. And in anybody that thinks it is, um, you're wrong. And I'll debate you on that subject, considering the history. I would invite anybody to look up, I mean, anything to do with Gaza, the West Bank. Sure, you're going to find things with either Jewish-leaning, I'm sorry, Zionist-leaning, or um, Palestinian-leaning. But, I mean, the truth's there for you to find for yourself. Yeah. Which I think we did a fairly decent job at discovering for ourselves. Yeah, so... Basically, and the thing is, like, you know, the one part when I was doing research, the part that, like, I found the most, like, weird was Christian Zionists. Mm -hmm. And we still have Christian Zionists to this day. Right. Well, most of the Christians are considered Christian Zionists for the fact that they support the state of Israel. Well, because, yeah, and just to give you a little subtext to that, if you don't know why they're, the Christians are supposed to support the state of Israel, <laughs> it's uh, biblical context. The Jews are supposed to live in Israel. Right. Can I get into the true... Uh, Torah Jews yes. time? Yeah you can So this was founded by um, A group of Jews They consider themselves to be true followers of the Torah I'll read you their mission statement The relatively new concept of Zionism Began only about a hundred years ago And since that time Torah true Jewry has steadfastly opposed Zionist ideology The struggle is rooted in two convictions One, Zionism by advocating a political and military end to the Jewish exile denies the very essence of the existence of the Torah in the first place. We are in exile by divine decree, and may only emerge from the exile solely by uh, divine redemption. All human efforts to alter the metaphysical reality are doomed to end in failure and bloodshed. History has clearly borne out this teaching. 2. Zionism has not only denied our fundamental belief in a heavenly redemption, 
It has also created a pseudo-Judaism which views the essence of our identity to be a secular nationalism. Accordingly, Zionism and the Israeli state have consistently endeavored via persuasion and coercion to replace a divine and Torah-centered understanding of our peoplehood with an armed materialism. True Torah Jews is dedicated to informing the world, and in particular the American public and politicians, that not all Jews support the ideology of the Zionist state created Israel. In fact, a great number of Orthodox Jews view this ideology of the state as diametrically opposed to the teachings of traditional Judaism. We are concerned that the widespread misconception that all Jews support the Zionist state and its actions endangers Jews worldwide. We are not politically motivated. We are motivated by our concern for the peace and safety of all people throughout the world, including those living in the Zionist state. We support and pray for peace for the people of the Zionist state, but have no interest in and do not support the Zionist government. We seek to disassociate Jews and the traditional Judaism from the Zionist ideology by providing historical and supporting documentation that Zionism is totally contrary to the teachings in the traditional Judaism through the words of our rabbis, sages, and holy scriptures, which oppose the creation of the state called Israel, providing historical documentation on the ideology and creation of Zionism, the supporters of Zionism, and the negative impact of their actions on the Jewish people in the past hundred years, including their involvement in the Holocaust and their activities up to the present day, publicizing the efforts of traditional Jews to demonstrate their opposition to Zionism efforts, which are often ignored by the mainstream media, and finally convincing the news media, politicians, and the public to cease referring to the state of Israel as a Jewish state, but to call it the Zionist state. We also aim to reach out to our Jewish brethren who have never studied the subject of Zionism from a Torah perspective and have only been taught the Zionist side of the story. It is our hope that all our fellow Jews will soon open their eyes, return to the Torah, and reject this ideology that replaces the Jews' age-old hope for God's redemption with the false redemption of human-initiated violence. Nice. I mean, that pretty much lays it out right there. Uh, when we talked about before, knowing the difference between being anti-Semitic and anti-Zionist. Right. Now, I believe I could be wrong, so correct me as I'm sure someone will if I am wrong. But the reason why they were exiled, divinely exiled from uh, Jerusalem, was because God had ordered them when they were given the land thousands of years ago or whatever it was, they were ordered by said God to murder everyone. Kill everything. Kill every man, woman, child. Burn all the crops. Destroy all the animals. Kill all the animals. Because even to just leave the animals and the crops would say that you were living off someone else's labor. Yeah. You were to go in and do everything death. Yeah. And start over. Well, after... They did not do that. And then... But after uh, the Romans uh, burned the capitals of the fucking ground, that thus began the long exile. Divine exile. Which, yeah, they believe that, and these Torah Jews, I think, obviously believe that after Rome burned their capital to the ground, that was divine intervention coming into play. Right. Because they didn't do what they were supposed to do in the first place. Yeah, if you follow the ideology that... I'm not saying, like, I... I that's just right. that's just what they believe. That's, that's their own belief yeah. from their own holy book. So... So for them to come in with sneaky conspiracies and build their numbers and then all of a sudden do what they've done would be in violation of their own religious teachings. Yeah. Therefore, true to our Jews org. Yeah. Back to a little bit of that history. So after the Holocaust, Jews began to come to Israel from all walk all over the world, uh, Arab and Muslim countries as well. In the first three years after the war, uh, the number of Jews in Israel went from 700,000 to 1.4 million, which that's literally double what they had. Mm-hmm. By 1958, the population was already at 2 million. Take it another 10 years, you're already, you have another 1.15 million Jews coming to Israel. So now we pushed, by 1970, we've pushed the population over 3 million Mm -hmm. in the region. So, and they arrived as refugees, you know what I mean? And that was a problem too, because um, you also saw, treatment of different Jews based on where you came from. So um, Middle Eastern Jews and North African Jews were actually not treated as well as European Jews were. And of course, you know, we have other things like, you know, the um, reparations that were given from West Germany, which was at the time $330 million. Jeez. Yeah. 
So yeah, and like I said, in the fifties, that's when you first begin to really see the amount of anger over this situation begin to boil over, and you saw it come from other countries surrounding Israel. Um, and the reason for that is is because Palestinians uh, fled. I mean, they were forced out of their homes. So what else were they supposed to do but flee to other countries to try to find homes? And uh, they found them in uh, Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. In 1948, I wrote down here, United, uh, the United Nations passed a resolution called UN Resolution 194, which forced the Israeli government that they were to allow the Palestinians to leave and pay them compensation for their loss and suffering. Yeah, I saw that. That never happened. No, they're still in violation of that UN resolution. Yeah. Right? So then in the 1950s, the United Nations uh, temporarily leased land to build tent cities for displaced Palestinians, eventually replacing them with concrete block buildings with metal roofs. Literally one room. Ovens. Block <laughs> built. Yeah, they were ovens, more or less. And if you, I just shared on our Facebook page, uh, and Abby Martin, where she went to some of these basically prison cities. That shit is fucking crazy. Yeah, so give that a look, because you will be blown the fuck away by what they're living through over there, and they will do it. She does a much better job at explaining the Palestinian plight than we could in this limited to show part but definitely check that out the other like some of the things i find the craziest is the fact like jews came there they were fleeing persecution and strife and murder across the globe not even just from the nazis like i didn't know how bad it was back in the late 18th century with the russians and stuff yeah Yeah. i mean they their entire history of the you know quote-unquote divine exile was nothing but oppression forced Living conditions, it starvation. And it didn't matter where they went. Murder. Unfortunately, the same things kept happening to them over and over again. Right. And like, now... One of them said he, he thought that they, in a way, sowed the secrets of their own, of, of others' hatred. Yeah. And I mean, because like, his, his thing was, is like, anywhere in the world, you're going to have problems with the people who keep themselves separated from the rest of the population and don't immerse in the culture like others do. Mm-hmm. And that was, I, and I'm not trying to justify what happened to them, but it's just, that's just a matter of fact. Right. You know, strangers as, as, as outsiders, as you always see them will always be outsiders. Yeah. And if, and imagine living in a time when, you know, people believe that witches had red hair and shit like that. We're talking about Eastern Europe here. Yeah. You know what I mean? If fucking shit goes wrong, a bunch of cows die from, from, from some disease. Blame the witch. Blame the witch or blame the Jews. Yeah. Because one of them did it. Right. Clearly. Yeah. It wasn't just disease or any of that shit. And I think to this day, here's the thing. I think to this day, I think a lot of the alarmist Zionist behave, uh, attitudes or anti-Semitic attitudes come from, we, we, we carried that shit with us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's not to say, and one thing I definitely want to reiterate on the show, okay, are there Jewish banking families that pull the strings and machinations of the world? Yes. Yes. Are there Gentile banking families that pull the strings and machinations of the world? Yes. Yes. So I would be led to believe that it has less to do with their religious background than it does the fact that they may just be assholes. Anybody that has any type of ideology where they blame a specific group for the problems of the earth need to, should I, I shouldn't say should, but need to look into Mark Passio's work because he shows you that that's just another box. Yeah. Where, you know, if you blame the Jews or you blame... The Freemasons. Yeah. Or you blame any group of people yeah. instead of the true evil, then you're just being boxed into an ideology and you can't yeah. fully grow. And that's the thing. And that's why, like, it, and the thing is, when you run in the, the conspiracy um, realms, uh, unfortunately, you do get a lot of anti-Semitism. Yeah, I love it. And anytime you look at any type of conspiracy video, you go to the, the, the dark dredges, which is the comment section. There's somebody calling them an anti-Semite, or there's like a white nationalist being like, well, he's covering up the Jews. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. And that's the problem I have is like anybody that comes to me and is like, begins spouting off that nonsense, like, I instantly disregard you. I'm sorry, I disregard your opinion because I, I doubt religion has as much to do with it. Now, that's the thing. Now, depending on their goals, because if you're a Zionist, your ultimate plan is to keep Israel and ethnic Zionists, you know, keep it Keep it Zionist. 
So obviously your machinations have to do with making sure that Israel stays where it's at. I'm willing to go as far as this when it comes to people that argue that it's religion's problem, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at Hermeticism, right? Yeah. And how most of the world's religions took Hermetic truths and put them into their religion and then used religion, whatever it might be, whatever religion it might be, then formed control systems in order to control people. Yeah. Sure. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll go that far. But to just say that they're only fighting because they're Jews and Muslims? No. Nah. No. Especially in the Israeli-Palestine conflict. They, listen, this is some <laughs> other shit. That's like saying that uh, uh, the beef that Native Americans have with uh, Europeans is over religion. Mm, no. no. Afraid not afraid. Anybody not. worth their... Su- who would say that? Nobody would say that. Nobody. Nobody. We Wounded Knee and the Trail of Tears didn't happen because they have a different religion than we do. Godlessness. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen because, because we believe different than they do. No. On religion. Do you think it might have had something to do with the fact that since 1967, when Israel had facilitated uh, only two occupations in the West Bank... Uh, in violation of the Fortune Geneva Convention. Um, <laughs> since then, as far as 2017, uh, Israel has established 237 settlements. Oh, do I think that's a coincidence? You think that's part of the problem? That could be part of the problem. The fact that uh, one of that the people that's interviewed in that video I shared on our Facebook page, um, one of the activists in that video that lives in one of those prison camps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, his grandfather was shot in the head when the Israelis moved into his house. Yeah. Do you think that forms some type of a generational hatred? I would imagine it would because I feel like I would be in the same boat. Do you think it has anything to do with the fact that in one of those prison cities they have memorials up for a, I think, a nine-year-old child that an Israeli shoulder shot in the head for no reason other than the fact that he was playing just to show that they could? Hmm. Just playing? Yeah. Or... I mean, fuck me, man. And that's the thing. <sighs> They've it's, been in it's, violation of the United Nations, which, fuck the government. We, yeah. We, we already know that. But modern day United Nations registered Palestinian, basically prisoners, there's 335,000 in Israel, 779,000 in the West Bank, and 1.1 million in Gaza. And they're not allowed to leave. The United Nations said you have to let them go, and you have to pay them for what you did to them. And they've been in violation every year. So how has the United States responded to this? By giving them lots and lots and lots and lots of money. Would you like to know how much money? Yeah, I would like to know how much money. Now, this is just on the books. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's more. Yeah. But <laughs> even though they've been in violation of this most important United Nations resolution, the United States has given... Uh, Just in 2016, they gave $38 billion in military aid. Between 1974 and 1989, $16.4 billion, and $2 billion annually. $1.5 billion on top of that from private donations from the United States. Israel is the 16th wealthiest country in the world. Yeah. I don't know, man. I Anybody that doesn't fully learn the difference between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism... They don't look into what's truly going on in Palestine. Bethlehem is a prison camp. The biblical city of Bethlehem yeah. is one of the most violent, quote-unquote, violent prison camps where Palestinian children are given 20-year prison sentences for throwing a rock at a fucking tank. Yeah. They're, they're not allowed to have their own water, right? They have to go and they get water twice a month. Israel could give them a pipe, but they choose not to. Yeah. 40% of all Palestinian males are prison, imprisoned in their lifetime. One of the families that he talks about in that uh, video that I shared on Bones and Sub's Facebook page, he said there was a house that was close to this giant prison wall that, wa- that blocks off the Palestinians from their olive crop. Mm-hmm. They're not allowed to get their olive trees. Uh, the house that's closest to the prison wall, anytime somebody throws a fucking rock, they just go to that house and arrest somebody huh. for no reason. There was a lady... An, an elderly lady, I think she was in her 60s, when there was a skirmish and they tried to break the wall to get to their olive trees, mm-hmm. the Israelis uh, the military, they just launched gas into her house until she died. And there's a part of that video, I don't know if you saw it, where um, 
the Israelis were going in to look for somebody in one of these prison camps. And instead of just going through the narrow streets, which will blow your fucking mind when you watch that video, yeah. blew my fucking mind. Mm -hmm. Instead of just going through there and risking being, have rocks thrown at them, they just blew a hole in somebody's house with a tank, ran in the house, blew another hole, and just went through that way. Right? So anytime that happened, it shows the video from, I don't know where the fuck it was recorded at. But they're screaming through a loudspeaker at the Palestinians, the Israelis are, and it says, If you throw rocks at us, we will gas you until you die. We will gas you until you die. They are literally the Nazis. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? And yeah, okay, let me ask you this, because we were talking about this the other day. What, when was the moment, and I'll tell mine in a minute, when, when was the moment where you realized, like, even if you were just like kind of in an apathetic state when it came to whatever was going on in Israel or whatever, and you really didn't pick a side on the matter, mm -hmm. what was the defining moment that made you realize that what they were doing was fucked? I thought about this more after we talked about it the other day, and it was before we started the podcast. You know, I've always been a fan of the rap's music, yeah. and I came across uh, a rapper who's a Palestinian Englishman, an English Palestinian. He goes by the name of Loki. And he had this song called Free Palestine. And I listened to it. And I was like, what the, f what the fuck is this? Hmm. So then I started looking into it. I looked into the West Bank. I looked into Gaza a little bit. And I was like, man, what the fuck? I don't have time for this. This is fucking crazy. Yeah. And then learning more over time about Gaza and just the absolute prison conditions and the fucking human rights violations and the absolute zionist fuckery i mean over the last couple of years it's just completely baseless and wrong i don't understand how any christian and you hear this from like any one of them right mm -hmm. that you, you know you see the the typical republican household that has the american flag out in front and then underneath it they have the zionist flag yeah they have no fucking idea what they're talking about yeah it just takes a little bit of time to look into it to see what you're supporting. If, it, it, separate yourself from just this conflict. Go to a similar conflict that's happened in history, and realize yeah. it's almost akin to flying a German or Nazi flag. You know what it is to me? It's almost like we are living in, a, in the modern era, and we're seeing colonialism play out in the modern era. And the thing is, it's like maybe to our modern sensibilities, this is why we're having a problem with it because we've evolved. And we're seeing what everybody else used to do a long time ago. Because that's all they're doing is Israel's just following suit to the colonialism of the past. Yeah. Like, the natives are restless. Let's fuck them. You know, I used to think it was just a Palestinian state over there and the Israel st Israeli state, right? Mm -hmm. But really, it's just a giant Zionist prison. And yes, they're just... They, there is no Palestinian state. They're systematically killing them off. Yeah. It's fucking crazy like that's not good i mean we're a conspiracy show so some would call it conspiracy that they're killing them off no they're really killing them off no i mean yeah they're, they're actually controlling their water they're controlling their food they're killing them there was a another abby and a lot of people say that abby martin is pro-palestinian leaning but who wouldn't be they used to say, after you learn what's going on over there after you visit one of these cities and she, seen what they're doing <laughs> she was blocked from going to gaza at one time and she talked about this on the Joe Rogan podcast, but then she it led me to to YouTube, which I'll encourage you all to do, Abby Martin, Gaza, and just go through the fucking long list of videos. She had videos of people like uh, Israelis, like teenagers, mm -hmm. and this one guy was wearing a Sons of Anarchy t-shirt, and he was talking about like the best thing to do would be to just kill all the Palestinians. Yeah. And you've got like children, uh, Israeli children, that are talking about how it's important not to... Uh, dirty yourself with mix racial mixing with the Palestinians. They're just like a class of subhumans to these people. Yeah, and how it's completely justified in their mind. And like, yeah, there were pictures of uh, IDF or Israeli Defense Force soldiers uh, wearing a T-shirt that had a pregnant woman on it, and there was a rifle, like a sniper scope, over the stomach, and it said "One shot, two kills." <sighs> Fuck me. No, I can't, man. No way. Anybody that has any type of want to call us an anti-Semite or any of that shit needs to do their fucking... I love humanity. Needs to do their work. I like people living. Yeah. I like people not being put into basically city prisons. I mean, call them what they are. They're ghettos. You're not allowed to leave. They're ghettos. That's what they are. They've recreated They've recreated Nazi ghettos. I know. It, it fucks me up. It really fucked me up going through this research like... 
how you can go from what what happened to you in the late 18th century, or all throughout history, let's yeah. just say that, since your quote-unquote divine exile, yeah. all the fucking crazy shit that's happened to you historically, and you just condensed it all into the Palestinian people. Yeah. You are fucked. I tell you, my mo- I've had a few moments. Like, a lot of time I tried to stay neutral on it, because I thought both sides... Because, you know, Hamas isn't exactly... They're not a bunch of... They're not a bunch of golden children either. I don't support that either. But the thing is, is think of the situation that they've been put into. Right. You know what I mean? So then, uh, you know, I've always kind of tried to play both sides of the matter. But here here recently, I finally just, like, I came off the fence. And I was like, you know what? No, nah, fuck, fuck this Zionist nonsense. Yeah. Because fucking... It's uh, just like the true tour Jews said. They endanger Jews worldwide by their actions. The Like, I think what got me finally was one thing in particular... You know, because there's constantly, like, strife at the border, and people throw rocks over the border and shit like that, right? And this one dude, who's been doing it for years, he's been fucking <laughs> shot at, his fucking legs were blown off. Like, he, he just kept coming back, though, and throwing rocks. He'd use a slingshot, right? Yeah. Out of his fucking wheelchair. Mm-hmm. We're talking about a Palestinian here. Yeah. And they fucking killed him, like, three weeks ago. Mm. Like, we're talking about people <clears throat> who have been reduced to literally sticks and stones right you're using fucking ballistic missiles fucking drones using fucking uh you're using mines yeah you're using fucking uh, large and small arms fire against a population that has been reduced to the stone age shame on you fuck you shame on you yeah i have no <sighs> i don't it's fucking crazy. Like I said, I bl- I firmly and fully believe to this point in my life, I realized what it was, and that was they are playing out their colonial fantasy mm-hmm. because they got their own manifest destiny going on right now, and fuck the people who were there before them. It's crazy too that they. It's a fact that they cannot exist without the United States giving them all that tax money. So your tax money that they that's being taken from you by theft is being used to fund this atrocity. And I think about, there was that video I, that you sent me of the African refugee oh, yeah. on the beach, just getting, uh, just landing, fucking skinny, fucking worn out, and a fucking Israeli dude just fucking yokes him up and fucking grabs him and holds him like he's some sort of fucking trophy. Holding his head by the hair. Yeah. Just to take a selfie with him like he was some type of dog that he was, ah, fuck, you wouldn't even hold a dog that way. You know? I just, I can't anymore. No, nah, man. And whenever I hear about, like, an uh, a musician or somebody being, like, like because it's ha- starting to happen mm-hmm. more, where you have musicians tapping out of music festivals because there's, like, an a- Israeli uh, performer and stuff like that, I totally get it. Yeah, for sure. Fuck them. Now, I would say this uh, to anybody listening. What would drive, you know, like, let's just put yourself in this perspective for a minute, that you were born into one of these prison cities. You're, you're The only thing you know is what's happening. Yeah, because you see these Palestinian children over there, and despite all these kids getting murdered by sniper rifles, yeah, and all the fucking starvation and all the disease and the suffering, the children can still play. Yeah, in the alleyways. Now, what would drive a child to throw a rock at a fucking tank? What has that child had to go through? The guy that they just murdered in the wheelchair after getting his fucking legs shot. Yeah. And imprisoned and all this shit. What drives a wheelchair-bound, handicapped Palestinian to throw a rock at a tank? Yeah. Do you think it's religion? Because yeah. I don't think it's religion. Listen, what drives an individual to treat someone like a fucking trophy? And they're a refugee. <clears throat> I'm, I'm pretty sure that in less than three generations, that dude's family was ref- were refugees mm-hmm. coming to that land from being persecuted and coming from a war-torn place where they were being slaughtered. And their bodies stacked high. Fuck that. Yeah. You have forgotten the face of your father. You should be sent west. You know, to quote the gunslinger, of course. There are peaceful ways to go about this. How many times have they been brought to the table? Again, I mean... I don't and know. they could have been the bigger man and fucking surrendered, land back, done something. They they could have... They, got, they, have, they get so much international money. Yeah. So much international money from the Western powers. We need to cut it off, for real. Again, though, that brings me back not to beat a, not to beat a dead horse or anything, but fuck the government. Yeah. I mean, not just our government, but every government. Yeah. 
Because this is all, it's just government. It's just democide's all it is. Mm-hmm. Government sanctioned murder. You know, if we were all just free people, it'd be, you know, handle your own. They were supposed to be, pro- they're supposed to be protecting us, quote unquote. Yeah, but they're not. Air quotes, protecting. Definitely not protecting us. Protecting us from what? You know what I mean? Themselves. <laughs> yeah. More or less. Oh, man, I don't know. Well, yeah. These might be short episodes. They might end up being, depending, I mean, I don't think there's a whole lot needs edited out, but. No. Uh, at least you know why it had to be done, you know? Yeah. I'm out on my, you know, little vacation. Ooh. So we're going to split it up into two. That way you guys have a bones and tubs in your ears twice. Yeah. Hopefully it's, hopefully it flows. Hopefully y'all understand. I would like to, once again, bring everybody to, uh, if you want to learn more about this, because obviously we do what we do. We just touch the surface of it, let you know what's going on, let you know what we think. But I would highly encourage everybody to check out Abby Martin's work. You can find it on YouTube, Abby Martin Gaza. Check out org to see what the true Jews are up to. Yeah. You know, teach yourself. Because, I mean, honestly, if you're just going with the government narrative or the church's narrative, you're just thinking that it's, these fucking Hamas guys trying to get rid of Israel because they just don't want Israel to have a country. Shut the fuck up, man. Yeah. Come on. No. Look it's more up. complicated than that. Teach yourself you know it. knowledge, you know. Yeah. Uh, go check out Martyr Maid, too. Oh, definitely check man, out Martyr Maid. That shit's intense. I really wish I could do a pot. Like, his, that shit is fucking crazy. Oregon Knife Guy, too. Here's a shout out to you because you told me that we should get into this a lot sooner than we did. And we yeah. waited way too long yeah to get all the way through it we definitely should have started this weeks ago yeah but uh but for a full understanding definitely check out his podcast yeah i think that about wraps it up for us we'd like to thank you all for listening to part one and part two of our piece on the <laughs> gaza zionist uh, history and current events yes we'd like to thank you all for listening We'd like to thank Ryan Simpson for letting us use his music on the show. Go check us out on Instagram, Facebook. You know, our podcast is on many podcatchers, Stitcher, Beyond Pod, iTunes. Go leave us a review. We'll send you a sticker. Also, check out our Patreon. You know, get that money. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I just sent out today a bunch of bumper stickers to, and to we everybody. Got, we got t-shirts in the works, too. So T-shirts. Go rate us on iTunes. Screenshot it. Send it to bonesandtubs at gmail.com. Send us a review on Stitcher if that's more your flavor. Suggest it to your friends. Subscribe on YouTube. Yeah. I'll even send you bumper stickers if you subscribe on YouTube. Yeah. And send us a screenshot of the subscribe button. There you go. Get that merch. All right. Well, merch. we'll uh, see you guys. At this this timeline is fucky. So, because this is the end of part two. Yes. So, we will see you next week with new... New topic. New topics. By next week, he means two weeks from now. Oh! <laughs> the I just, time. I just got a nosebleed. Yeah. All right. Thank you all for listening. We love you. We really do. Yeah. This is for Palestine, the Marla, West Bank, Gaza. This is for the child that is searching for the answer. We are shut it, taking tears in the place from the laughter. We don't live Palestine, we don't live Gaza. Palestine, the Marla, West Bank, Gaza. This is for the child that is searching for the answer. We are shut it, taking tears in the place from the laughter. We don't live Palestine. While we listen to tunes made by ignorant fools Israel blocked the UN from delivering food They bring in the troops and you won't even glimpse at the news They make money off the products that we're quick to consume And it's not simply a question of different views Forget emotions, this is facts, what I spit is the truth Makes no difference if you're a Christian or if you're a Jew They're just people living in different conditions to you They still die when you bomb their schools Mosques and hospitals, it's not because of rockets Please God, can you stop this all? I'm not related to the strangers on the TV, but I relate, cause those strangers could have been me, words could never ever explain the raw tragedy, no. it's not a war, they're just murdering more rapidly, and we're automatically supporting pure savagery, imagine how you feel if this was your family. Free free Palestine, free free Palestine, free free Palestine, free free Palestine, free free Palestine.
Palestine. Palestine remains in my heart forever. We stand for peace. Times of war, we shan't surrender. Remember, it didn't start in this dark December. Every coin is a bullet if you're Marks and Spencer. And when you're sipping Coca Cola, that's another pistol in the holster of them soulless soldiers. You say you know about. The Zionist lobby, but you put money in their pocket when you're buying their coffee. Talking about revolution sitting in Starbucks. The fact is, that's the type of thinking I can't trust, let alone even start to respect before you talk. Learn the meaning of that scarf on your neck. Forget Nestle, your Obama promised Israel 30 billion over the next decade. They're trigger happy and they're crazy. Think about that when you're putting Huggies nappies on your baby. Just a war over stolen land Why do you think little boys are throwing stones at tanks? And we'll never really know how many people are dead They drop bombs on innocent girls while they sleep in their bed Don't get offended by facts, just try and listen Nothing is more anti-Semitic than Zionism So please don't bring bad vibes when you speak to me There's plenty of bad vibes that agree with me It's your choice what you do with this message Don't get it confused, I view this from a human perspective How many more resolutions have to be violated? How many more, How many more children have to be annihilated? Israel is a terror state, they're terrorists that terrorize I testify my television, televise and telling lies This is not a war, it is systematic change Genocide, but whatever they try, Palestine will never die. Palestine, Ramallah, West Bank, Gaza This is for the child that is searching for an answer Wish I could take your tears and replace them with laughter Long live Palestine, long live Gaza Palestine, Ramallah, West Bank, Gaza This is for the child that is searching for an answer Wish I could take your tears and replace them with laughter Long live Palestine, long live Gaza